Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the topic Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. Before discussing the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic, let us discuss two lemmas. They can be used to prove the Fundamental Theorem. So first lemma is Euclid's lemma. If P is a prime and P divides AB, then either P divides A or P divides B. To prove this, suppose we have P is a prime number and P divides AB. Now we have to show that P divides A or P divides B. Suppose P does not divide A. Suppose P does not divide A. Now we have to show that P divides B. So since P does not divide A, we have P and A are relatively prime. That is P comma A. GCD of P comma A is equal to 1. So there are integers alpha and beta such that alpha p plus beta a equal to 1 that is their linear combination is equal to 1 we can find such alpha and beta now multiplying both sides of this equation by b we get alpha p b plus beta a b equal to b now clearly we have p divides b and also we are given that p divides a b so p divides p and p divides a b therefore p divides the linear combination of P and AB that is P divides alpha into PB plus beta into AB that is it is a linear combination of this P and AB. So P divides alpha PB plus beta AB it is nothing but B that is P divides B. So if P does not divide A then we have P divides B. Therefore if P is a prime and P, div P divides AB then either P divides A or P divides B. Now this can be generalized by using uh, induction. That is the lemma 3.4. Let P be a prime and P divides A1, A2, etc. An. That is the product of these numbers A1, A2, etc. An. Where A1, A2, etc. An are positive integers. Then P divides AI for some i where i varies from 1 to n. That is P divides A1 or P divides A2 or P divides A3, etc. P divides A. At least we have P divides AI for some i. This can be proved by induction first when n equal to 1 here we have to show that p is a prime and p divides a1 a2 etc an then we have to show that p divides a i for some i so if n equal to 1 we have this a1 a2 etc an is nothing but a1 itself so p divides a1 so the result is true for n equal to 1 clearly now assume that, assume that uh, the result is true for arbitrary force integer k that is if p divides a1 a2 etc a k then p divides a i for some i that is the assumption now now we have to show that the result is true for n is equal to k plus 1 so here we assumed that p, uh, n is, the result is true for n equal to k that means if p divides a1 a2 etc a k then p divides a i for some i now for n is equal to k plus 1 we have to show that if p divides a1 a2 etc a k a k plus 1 this implies p divides a i for i varies from 1 to k plus 1 that is we need to prove now so suppose p divides a1 a2 etc a k plus 1 that is p divides a1 a2 etc a k into a k plus 1 so by the previous lemma lemma 3.3 we have we, we know if p divides a b and p is a prime then p divides a or p divides b so we can take here uh, a as this and b as a k plus 1 so p is a prime here and p divides this a into b so either p divides a this is a and this is b or p divides uh, b that is p divides a1 a2 etc a k or p divides a k plus 1 so by our assumption we have p divides a1 a2 etc a k implies p divides a i for some i varies from 1 to k right so we have uh, if p divides a1 a2 etc a k then we have paired p divides a i for some i for 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to k this is by our assumption 1 therefore we obtain that p divides a i where 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to k or p divides a k plus 1 therefore we have p divides a i for some i uh, where i varies from 1 to k plus 1. Therefore, result is 
true for n is equal to k plus 1 also if it is true for n is equal to k therefore by induction we can say that the result holds for every positive integer n now we have a corollary of this lemma if p q1 q2 etc qn are primes here p q1 q2 etc qn are primes such that p divides q1 q2 etc qn then p equal to qi for some i where 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n now to prove this we are given that p divides q1 q2 etc qn where q1 q2 etc qn are primes and p is also prime so uh, from the previous lemma we have since p divides q1 q2 etc qn we have p divides qi for some i but we know that p is a prime and qi is also another prime but p divides qi is uh, occurs only if p equal to qi therefore we have if all these numbers are primes that is p is a prime and q1 q2 etc qn are primes then p divides q1 q2 etc qn implies p equal to qi for some i now we have the fundamental theorem of arithmetic the statement of the theorem is every integer n greater than or equal to 2 either is a prime or it can be expressed as a product of primes any integer n greater than or equal to 2 either is a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes and the factorization into primes is unique except for the order of the factors there are two parts for the proof of this theorem first part is uh, to show that any integer is a prime or it can be expressed as a product of prime and it can be you proved by strong induction and the second part is the uniqueness of the factorization so to prove the first part let p of n denote the statement that n is a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes says p of n is a statement n is a prime or can be expressed as a product of prime so to show that p n is true for every integer greater than or equal to 2 we can use the uh, strong induction so for n is equal to 2 p n is true because we have p of t p of 2 is true because 2 is a prime we know 2 is a prime the statement p of 2 is nothing but 2 is a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes since 2 is a prime we have p of 2 is a p of p, p of 2 is true now assume that p of 2 p of 3 etc p of k are true this is the assumption that is every integer from 2 to k every integer from 2 to k either is a prime or it can be expressed as a product of primes so that is the assumption now we have to show that p of k plus 1 is true that is we have to show that k plus 1 is either a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes now if k plus 1 is a prime then we have p k plus 1 is true now suppose that p, p k, uh, k plus 1 is not a prime therefore k plus 1 is a composite then k plus 1 can be expressed as some a into b for some integers a and b where a and b lies between 1 and k plus 1 that is 2 less than or equal to a comma b less than or equal to k but by inductive hypothesis as by this we have a and b are either primes or can be expressed as a product of primes because uh, by inductive hypothesis we have every integer from 2 to k either is a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes so here we have uh, a and b are integers uh, which lies between 1 and k plus 1 that is 2 less than or equal to a plus a comma b less than or equal to k therefore by that hypothesis 1 a and b either are primes or can be expressed as a product of primes it is by the inductive hypothesis 1 so in any case we have k plus 1 equal to a b can be expressed as a product of primes because we have uh, a and b are either primes or can be expressed as products of primes so p k plus 1 is also true if uh, p2 p3 etc p k are true therefore by strong induction we have the result p of n is true for every integer n greater than or equal to so this is the first part now the second part is to establish the uniqueness of the factorization we have uh, proved that any integer n greater than or equal to 
to either it is a prime or it can be expressed as a product of primes. Now we have to show that that factorization is unique. Let n be a composite number with two factorizations into primes. That is n is equal to p1, p2, etc. pr, which is equal to q1, q2, etc. qs. So suppose we are uh, assuming that there are uh, two factorizations for same number n. Now we have to show that this factorization is unique. For that, we will show that r equal to s, that is this r equal to s and every pi, every pi equals some qj. If you are taking any of this pi, it will be equal to some qj for some j. That is we are going to prove. So assume for convenience that r less than or equal to s. Since p1, p2, etc. pr is equal to q1, q2, etc. qs, we have, that is we are given. So since this is equal to this. We have P1 divides P1, P2, etc. PR. Therefore, P1 divides Q1, Q2, etc. QS. Right. P1 is a factor of this. Therefore, P1 is a factor of this also. So, P1 divides Q1, Q2, etc. QS. So, by previous corollary, we have P1 is equal to uh, at least one of this. That is, P1 is equal to QI for some I. Now, dividing both sides by P1. Because we, we obtained from the previous corollary that one of this qi is equal to p1. So we can divide that p1. So dividing that p1 we get the left hand side will be uh, from this equation we get the left hand side will be p2, p3, etc. pr. So that, that is we divided this p1. And from here we have we have to divide qi. So q1, q2, etc. qi minus 1 into qi plus 1, etc. qs. So we divided qi because we have p1 is equal to qi. Here we have uh, p1, p2, etc. pr is equal to q1, q2, etc. qs. So we divided p1 and qi because p1 is equal to qi. So the remaining part is p2, etc. pr is equal to q1, q2, etc. qi minus 1, qi plus 1 plus etc. In, into etc. qs. Now repeating this that is uh, p2 divides this. Therefore p2 divides this also, this RHS also. So from the previous uh, the corollary 3.9, we have P2 equal to some QJ for some J. P2 equal to QJ for some J. So we can divide QJ also, that is P2 also. So if you are dividing P2, we will get P3, P4, etc. PR is equal to Q1, Q2, etc. QI minus 1. We already divided QI and now we are dividing QJ also because QJ equal to P2. So since R is less than or equal to S, R is actually uh, the suffix of the left hand side and s is the suffix of the right hand side. So since r is less than or equal to s, continuing like this we can cancel every pt that is every prime uh, factors from the left hand side with some qk. So that means in the left hand side we will get 1 and the right hand side will not have any primes because actually we have r is less than or equal to s. So we divided all the pi's. So it, uh, the left hand side will be 1 and there may be some qj's here but uh, there, there, there will not be any qj uh, primes here because uh, we know any product of uh, 2 primes will not be 1 so there are no primes here that means uh, here also we have one only 1 so we divided all qk's for, from the left hand side right, right hand side therefore r equal to h itself therefore r equal to s itself and hence primes q1, q2, etc. qs are the same as the primes p1, p2, etc. pr in some order. That is the factorization of n is unique except for the order in which the primes are written. That is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. That is any integer n greater than or equal to 2 either is a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes.